Excellent. Right. IHRM online session, Saturday 11, April 2020. Right. Our final discussion on coursework assignment number two. Our final discussion on coursework assignment number two. All right, learn outcomes, right, for today. One, guidance on how to explore, right, guidance on how to explore one of the factors. Guidance on how to explore, right, one of the factors that you are asked to discuss, right. Two, reviewing a past student's assignment, right, as we review this assignment, we'll learn what to do and what not to do, right, and three, right, and three, Right, and three, reviewing a journal article on the topic. Right, a journal article on the topic. Right, a journal article on the topic. Right, so by now we are very familiar with the assignment requirements. Right, you are required to perform a pestle analysis, a pestle analysis, right, a pestle analysis, right, of the Malaysian uh, economy. Right, assuming that you're the consultant advising the board of directors of a British MNC, right, who has just, who are, who's on the verge, which is on the verge of establishing a new founded subsidiary in the Malaysian climate, right, in the Malaysian context, right? So you are an advisor to the board of directors and you have to explore the various factors that would encourage you know, either this localization of HRM practices in the Malaysian context or the standardization of HRM functions, right, in the Malaysian economy. After first setting up a, 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 a pestle analysis of the Malaysian economy with respect to a British MNC setting up a subsidiary there, right? So the examiner would have told you, you cannot speak, you know, exhaustively about all the factors that you will come across in your wider readings. Just choose about three to four, three to five of the factors, right? Just to choose about three to five of the factors, right? Good. Now, if I go back to the chat, who can tell me some of the factors, right? Right, right, who can tell me, right? Some of the factors to discuss. Who can tell me some of the factors to discuss? Right? Or what factors have you been discussing, right, in your assignment thus far? I'm sure you guys have started your assignment. Hmm? Who can tell me some of the factors that you have been discussing? Don't fight it. Everyone will get a chance to answer. Some of the factors that you have been discussing. Bridget, nice, uh, Scott, uh, some of the factors. Right, last week we discussed the four influences framework, right? And the sustainability debate. So I hope you are incorporating those factors. We also spoke about Black's right model of in country in country adjustment for expatriates. And so right. We're gonna tell you some of my factors that we, you guys have been discussing. Let's attempt to document some of the factors. Right. Let us attempt to document right, some of the some of the factors. Right. So you might be discussing why right, country of origin factors or parent country. Right. Parent country factors. Might be discussing parent country factors, right? And this might include areas such as method of, method of founding, 
right? Resource dependency, right? Of the subsidiary or the parent company, right? For resources, not so, right? Good, good. The culture, our parent company culture, I would say parent company culture, right? Parent company culture, right? Uh, I will also say what? Management style. So these are some of the, the dimensions of parent country factors. Some of the, the, the dimensions there, right? Some of the dimensions there, not so, right? Good. Some of the dimensions there, good. Right, we may also say, right, another important factor might be host country, host country culture. Right, host country culture. Who, who's the host country in this scenario? Malaysia hosting the British subsidiary. Right, Malaysia hosting the subsidiary. Yeah, host country culture. Mm -hmm. Hosting the subsidiary, host country culture. So, this will relate to, right, right, uh, high context culture, right, some dimensions, right, so low context, right, culture, high context culture, then low context culture, not so, we just speak about the cultural gap, right, between parent company and what? Host country, the cultural gap, right? Cultural gap. Mm -hmm. Good. Right? Probably the lack of cultural formalization, right? Right? Familiarization, the lack of cultural familiarization, right? Not so. The lack of cultural familiarization. Good. Yeah, well, again, on the host country culture, right? right? Norms, beliefs, and practices of the host country. Norms, beliefs, and practices of the host country. Norms, beliefs, and practices of the host country. Right? Norms, beliefs, and practices of the host country. Good. Right. Known beliefs and practices, right, of the host country. Right. Good. What well, again? What about institutional factors? Institutional factors. So these are some dimensions of the factors you should be discussing. For the second part of the question, institutional factors. This will, right, this will involve institutional factors are those factors specific to the Malaysian economy. Are those factors specific to the Malaysian economy? Right, are those factors specific to the Malaysian economy? Right? Right, are those factors specific to the Malaysian economy, right? So institutional factors, right? So that will include what? Uh, legal factors, not so? national business system, right, in Malaysia, right, national, right, the closeness of stakeholders, of various business stakeholders, in Malaysia, right, the education system, the education system, right, right, who is government requirements, who is government requirements for Right, multinational operations for multinational operations, for multinational operations, right, for multinational operations, right, for multinational operations, yeah, right, for multinational operations, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. for multinational operations, good. Yeah. Right, and then you can include, right, right, dominance factors, if you like, dominance factors, 
right? And various dimensions might be the need for what international integration, need for international integration of HRM practices across all the subsidiaries of the British multinational, etc. And this relates to, right? This relates to the four, right? The four influences framework, the four, the four influences framework, the four influences framework. So these are four simple factors. If I were you, I would discuss, right? Four simple factors. If I you, you know, and you read all the material, don't discuss seven or eight factors, group the factors into three to four major factors. And you discuss you now the dimensions of these factors, making sure all the issues are discussed, right? Uh, one useful point on institutional factors is discussing, right, isomorphic, isomorphic right, theory, isomorphic theory and its impact on multinationals and its impact on, and its impact on multinationals and its impact on multinationals, right? Yeah and its impact on multinationals, right? Excellent. Good. Are you hearing me now, Ramona? Are you hearing me now? Good. Is everyone hearing me? Excellent. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Ramona, welcome. Mm -hmm. So each of the factors could be welcome. Each of the factors could be subheadings in your report. Each of these factors could be subheadings in, in your report. Again, assume your role. You are the HR consultant advising by the board of directors of this British multinational. Right? So please assume your role. Right? So please assume your role, okay? So let's attempt to document some of the factors. We have done that. Very simple, we have done that. Now, how would you go about discussing a factor? Right, and this is important. What do we explore? What do we explore? How do we, would you explore a, a particular factor? Right, how would you discuss a, a particular factor? How would you go about exploring a particular factor? This is what we want to figure out. Okay? And look at the look at these questions I'm 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 trying to you know outline here for this to start your thinking. Look at these factors to get you to think how you should go about exploring a particular factor. Take your time, digest it. Take your time, read it for five minutes, and then we discuss.
again. So for each critical factor you are discussing, consider the following. For each critical factor that you are discussing, consider the following. How does it encourage localization of HR practices? Right? For each factor. So you introduce the factor. That's the first thing that you are doing. Right? This, let's start the document. So you introduce the factor. You introduce the factor. Right? Let's say the factor you are discussing, right, is host country factors. There's host country factors. Right? Host country factors. Right? Or let's say, better yet, institutional factors. Let's take an actual factor that we have on above. Right? Institutional. Institutional factors. Good. So introduce the factor. Right? As you introduce, you relate to, to any theory. Right? On the factor. Right? Now, from the examination of the material, you should know that you should know by now that institutional factors, right? institutional factors, right, will influence the British, right, the British subsidiary, right, to adapt and use, right, local HRM functions, to use local HRM fun functions. Right, so after you introduce the factor, you should know that, not so? So you get about a reference here to collaborate this. A reference here, not so? As you introduce institutional factors, right, you also, you also reference here, not so? Again, you also reference here. So now, now we made the connection, right? Good. How? Well, institutional factors, how will institutional factors, right, encourage local, right, Malaysian, right, practices to be used, right? Yeah, local, right. So let us say you are discussing right and the link between institutional institutional factors institutional factors right in, link between institutional factors and recruitment and recruitment and recruitment right it may be a case it may be a case right yeah, that the local education system, the local education system, and the availability of right talented local staff may suggest that a polycentric right staffing approach, staffing approach be used, right, by the British subsidiary, by the British subsidiary. So here, class, here, right, here we are making, here we are making the link, right, between, here we are making the link between Mm -hmm. Here we are making the link between Right? Between the factor, we are making a link between the factor and here we are making the link between 
between a factor and this and specific and the specific IHRM function, IHRM function of recruitment, right? And a specific IHRM function of, of recruitment, right? You might also want to say, right? I'm just speaking randomly here. Institutional factors may also dictate that local promotional right, practices be used. No, so, right? Why? You need to justify this argument. So as you do your research, you need to justify this argument as you do your research. So it is important to link the factor to the IHRM function, which has been localized or standardized in the new subsidiary in Malaysia. So I wanna, I wanna press pause here, right? And open up the microphone, all the microphones to ensure that you guys understand this linkage. Any questions on this linkage? No. You're sure? Yeah. Oh, very good. Who is this? Kemba? Bridget. Oh, Bridget. Okay, Bridget, how far are you reaching your assignment? Um, still on the pastel so far. Trying oh. to balance leadership as well. All right, like you have a late start on this assignment or? Um, well, still trying to tie up loose ends for Arnold, which is due Monday. Yeah. and leadership and well this at the same time so i'll mm -hmm. get there man so okay so you kind of share this one because the others the others uh the deadline earlier are... yeah all well, right for Arnold, yeah. so you guys have a submission deadline frame on monday no the for uh is on oh, monday for UH. oh yeah okay all right oh okay okay all right and what about the leadership assignment I think is it the day before or the day after yours one out of the two. Oh, okay. I think so it's the day after. Yeah. Right. So yeah, sometime yet. All right, all right. Okay. Kemba, any questions? No, no, I, I came in a bit late, so I'm now um picking it up. Yeah. All yeah. right, all right, good, good. Rajesh, three. <laughs> Rajesh. Raj three. Any questions? Ramona? Yes, I'm here. Okay, any um, questions? I'm going to join us later. No, no questions yet. I think it's based on when I get into a little more research. Okay. I may have some questions that I have to email you, possibly. Sure, sure. No problem. No problem. What about Akil? Akil, any questions? No questions, Akil. Very good, no questions. Sheldon. Yeah. Good, good. I told you I'd given you your, your report some, some respect, you know, so I'll finish off everything else and then I'll give that my full attention. Oh, that means you haven't read, yes. Yeah, that's no, no, no. demanding. So you have a good two weeks again. So you yeah, yeah, yeah. So right, right. Um, but you realize it's a heavy assignment. Eh? It's not a block. Yeah. So that is why I want to take that that that, that time mm -hmm. and, and do it. So I'll just yeah, sure. yeah. I realize you know. I almost treat my second assignment. So yeah, it's a heavy. By Wednesday, so I should. Yeah, and I'll have time for it. Yes, yes. But you guys still working from home and so on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay, all right. I understand how it goes. So, spent multitasking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No problem. I understand that. I just want to make sure that everybody understand what are the issues to be discussed. You know, right? So, all right. Let's continue. I'm gonna mute all again. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Any questions, anybody? Before I mute. Anyways, uh, well, I see you going down. So probably when you go down further. But my question was. Um, <laughs> based on the standardization and localization mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um can you make your conclusion of standardization or or localization yeah. in a um 
like a table format, like a risk assessment? Yeah, you can put it in your appendix, but okay, you, right? You can you can put that in your appendix and refer to it in the in, in your write up in your in okay. your report write up. All but right, going back to the original question, mm -hmm. now can you have a position? Can you recommend as a board consultant a position? Should the company standardize or localize? Yes, you your conclusion should be a position. Are you recommending standardization or are you recommending the localization? Right? So it can't be a position because remember you are the board consultant advising the board of directors. Okay, thanks. Right? Right, so it can't be a position. Good? Right. So let's go down. Everyone is muted. Again, so how does the factor encourage localization of HRM practices? Right? Specifically, what HRM practices are localized? Right? Remember, the term used in the assignment is not HR practices, is it? Is HRM, is HRM functions, HRM functions, right? HRM functions, good. How are these local HRM functions different to the parent country HRM functions, right? How are they different to the parent country? Maybe you're comparing what HRM functions are staple to the British context and what HRM functions might be more worthy to use in the Malaysian, in the Malaysian context, right? Now, obviously Malaysian HRM functions may not to be too drastically different from British, but we, as we traverse the material, we'll be, we, should be, we should be seeing that cultural factors and institutional factors in Malaysia will obviously encourage Malaysian HRM functions to be used in Malaysia. How does the factor encourage centralization of HRM practices? Now, as you traverse all the material, as you traverse all the material, you know that there are some synonyms for standardization. There are some synonyms for the standardization. For the standardization of HRM functions, of HRM functions. This is where both the subsidiary and the parent company will use the same HRM functions. As you traverse the material, you will appreciate the term centralization of HRM practices, right? Or even the term convergence, the convergence of IHRM functions. This is where subsidiaries and the parent company use the same blend of HRM functions. All right, so standardization have some synonyms, centralization, or even the term convergence of IHRM functions. Conversely, the localization of HRM of HRM functions, right? Of HRM functions, right? Have some synonyms. The localization of HRM functions also have some synonyms, right? Right? Right, such as decentralization. Decentralization of HRM functions. Right, or the divergence of IHRM Right, or the divergence of IHRM functions. 
the decentralization of HRM functions or the divergence of IHRM functions or the divergence of IHRM functions. Right? Or the divergence of IHRM functions. Right? Yeah? So as you read the material, you will come across these terms. As you read the material, you will come across these terms. So if you use these similar terms, but you explain what they mean, obviously, before using them, it will show the examiner that you have done further reading on the topic, right? It will show the examiner that you will have done further reading on the topic. Specifically, which HR functions are centralized, continuing, and in what ways? How, F, how are these centralized HR practices different to the host country? to the host country HR practices. Yeah, to the host country HR practices, right? Why are the centralized HR practices beneficial to the MNC for the critical factor you have presented? Why are the centralized HR practices beneficial to the MNC, right, for the critical factor you have presented? So here now you explain some of the underlying reasons why companies may want to centralize or standardize their HRM functions, as well as localize their HRM functions, okay? And you can include that discussion in your introduction as you open up the whole debate on standardization and localization. As you open up the whole debate on standardization and localization. Then H, how might you present the extent to which the factor would lead to localization or centralization? All right? How might you present the extent to which a factor would encourage standardization localization? How would you rate extent to a, a mild extent, to a moderate extent, to a high extent? Right? Right? To a, a mild extent, to a moderate extent, to a high extent. So I think we need to explore how do we discuss one of the factors. How do we discuss at least one of the factors? We need to explore this. This was fundamental to this, to this question, to this assignment. So you can discuss three factors, four factors perhaps, right? You can discuss two factors which encourage standardization and two factors which encourage localization. Now, one rule of thumb is that you cannot just jump into using these terms, standardization and localization. These are foreign terms. When I say foreign terms, they are not using your assignment requirements, right? We have assumed now we know fully that the topic is standardization and localization. So as you introduce these terms, and even their synonym terms, you must explain the, their meaning very succinctly, very clearly, because you don't have that latitude of extra words. It's only a 2,000 word assignment. There's only, all right? It is only a 2,000 word assignment. It is only a 2,000 word assignment. Okay, so at this point in time, since we have gone through that, yeah, let's look at a similar assignment for a past student. Let's look at a, a similar assignment for a past student. Yeah, reviewing a past student assignment, what to do and what not to do. Now this assignment is about five years ago eh, and the, the requirements of this assignment was different to yours. Requirements of the assignment, right, were different to yours, right? So let me just share it very quickly. Again, and go through it. Well, right? This was the title, title of the topic back then. Yeah? This was the topic title back then. This is a previous assignment of about five or six years ago. 
uh, this is a student who got a first class honors in the barber program, right? Yeah, first class honors barber program. I think her name, well, I will leave her name anonymous. Identify and analyze critical factors multinational corporations should take into consideration when deciding on the extent to which they should centralize or localize HRM functions in a new foreign national location. So you will find when you read this topic title to the ones that you got, your, your topic assignment is more situational to the Malaysian context. You are assuming the role of an HR consultant advising a British MN, advising a British MNC, advising a British MNC. So the, the, your, your assignment would have evolved over the years. So this is why folks, you have to really immerse yourself in your assignment and know your role as the consultant to the board of this British multinational. Because this was simply the topic given to students back then. But your assignment requirement has evolved. They have to do personal analysis, right, of the Malaysian environment, et cetera. Yep. As in 2014, yep. Look at the start and the style of writing. Multinationals today are becoming increasingly detached from their country of origin and taking up the role as borderless players in the contemporary international economies of the world that forces them to make the need decision of global integration or local adaptation, FUNA 2007. Globalization being the main contributor to this evolution places emphasis not only on international FDI, strategic analysis, and cross-border mobility, but more so the impact on various business functions, such as international HRM, when expanding into international borders. I we seen the style of writing, the direct relation to international HRM. There is no fluff, right? There's good sentence construction, making sense, good use of in-text referencing, right? To date, over 54,000 transnational organizations, right? Has attributed to an increase in FDIs, I actually spoke about FDIs, inflows, right? In developing countries and accounting for 3.4 trillion in foreign investments over 49,000, 449,000 foreign affiliates, IMF, she called the IMF. So you might want to review statistics on IMF, the World Trade Organization, the UNDP report. This has brought to light the value. Even that is too wordy. This has brought to light. Why, why use five words there to start a sentence? The value of international HRM as emphasis on the divergence conversion aspect of HR practices relative. Brewster et al. 2007, see how she introduced the synonym, the synonym terms and put in single quotation marks, divergence, convergence. Yes, the student where I was a female student. The consideration of contextual factors are both local and national levels, such as cultural variations, institutional comparative, structural systems, and social and political factors when entering a foreign national location. And any topic opener, any topic area sentence, this essay, well, back then was an essay, you guys have to do a report. This essay will identify and analyze critical factors a MNC should consider when deciding as to what extent, right, they should centralize or localize their HR functions in a foreign national location, right, in a foreign national location, right? any national location. In a foreign national location. Yeah. So you see how she, the student, right? itemize all the factors that she was going to analyze in relation to whether the company or multinational should centralize or standardize 
the standards or localized the HRM functions when entering a new foreign location. Let's just read how she explores one of the factors. That's important to make the link how to link the factor right to the IHRM function, which has been standardized or localized. The management of international subsidiaries presents MNCs with unique challenges that often leads to high levels of uncertainty when entering into a foreign national location. These challenges are relative to cultural variation between the MNC and host country and divergent interests of company headquarters and subsidiary. Some typo, do not uh, uh, bold type, right, teams, right, underline. That's a no-no when you're doing academic writing. This may pose a challenge when deciding as to what extent, right, Right, so the fact that she's discussing here is cultural variations. This may pose a challenge as to what extent an MNC should centralize or localize their HRM practices. How state viewed most management and HRM practices as based on cultural beliefs, such as social structures, that underpins the values and assumptions of the national culture in which the company is embedded, which can take the form of power distance, uncertainty avoidance, individualism, masculinity, and Confucianism. I you see the relation there to Hofstede? Margot 2004 also states that the greater the cultural distance between two entities, the more likely the transfer and acceptance of HRM practice from an MNC to a local subsidiary will be negatively impacted. That could have been said a bit, uh, 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 a much more sourcing, clearer way, right? Present in a case for localization. For example, companies that origin in the US has been said to be more centralized, specialized, right? And formalized in their HRM functions and employee related policies. To maintain control and efficiency of the subsidiary. However, in the Japanese companies, the approach to HRM functions is to create fit between host country culture and parent company policies to foster effective management of the subsidiary and its human resources, right? To foster effective management of the subsidiary and its human resources, right? The long-term survival of MNCs is not an only independent, is not only dependent on organizational efficiency, but is ind indicative right, of the ability to adapt to local institutions of their chosen host country. Ah, Sayani et al, 2012. The country of origin of NNCs plays a major influence in creating a balance between centralization and localization. You see all the factors introduced, country of origin. I would say, I would have said the country of origin factor, right, as embodied in the four influences framework and they put a reference so in that way, you get a chance to code the four influences framework, which is one of the requirements, right, in the assignment, which we discussed extensively last week in the PDF book. Mm -hmm. Extensive research has also revealed that almost all MNCs display some evidence of their country of origin within their management practices, especially in their HR functions and can be traced through the people working within the organization. This can lead to challenges when deciding to what extent to centralize or localize HRM practices. This can lead to challenges when deciding to what extent. For example, US MNCs have been compared to Japanese MNCs relative to their styles of uh, HRM practices utilizing their subsidiaries, right? Again, right? Not relative in relation to. Japanese MNCs display strong characteristics, right? They display strong character, right? Strong characteristics, right? With informal centralized policies and are highly dependent on international networks, where US MNCs has have elaborated systems displaying control and standardized global systems in place. Very succinct, clear, potent writing. Again, and now. They spoke about cross-cultural adjustment and blocks. So are you seeing the clear linkage between the factor and the IHRM? But even the IHRM function is not drilled down in detail. 
what IHIM function is be standardized, standardized or localized? Is it, it shouldn't be just recruitment. The other IHIM function, what about performance management and the type of performance appraisals that should be used? What about tree and development? Any types of training development approaches will be used. What about compensation? All these are other IHRM functions, which is why the student only got, I believe, 68 out of 100 for this assignment. Right? 68 out of 100 for this assignment, which is about 48 out of 70 or 45 out of 70, somewhere, somewhere to that effect. Right? Somewhere to that effect. You're for me, guys. Yeah? Very exciting. Yep. Very, very exciting. Mm -hmm. So what you all think about this assignment? What do you think about this assignment? <coughs> very in depth. Right, very in depth. Not so? Yeah. Good. So but even not all the IHM functions were discussed. No. All right. The, the students speak about multinational orientations according to Paul Mata, like ethnocentric orientation or polycentric orientation or geocentric orientation. Right? Nothing about mention of local and host, nothing about the four influences framework, the four influences framework, the sustainability debate and the need to reduce risk. Look at the assignment teams on the second page of the assignment. That a lot of information. What's that? I think it's missing a lot of more details. It's not that details speaking about HRM practices and the different factors and functions of it. As you Can just I... mentioned, a lot of things was left out. Yes. Can I, I wish we got a, pro a, a question like this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If we got a question like this, you know, where was a generic general question? It would have been free reign, not so. Yeah. It would have been free reign, but our question is much more situational, it's much more role playing, right? That you are the board consultant, right? Advising this British MNC, right? So our question is a bit more role playing, mm -hmm. right? Ramona, any, any comment? If we say right. what, I, in depth. what I realize is that we really me, have to, as you say, insert ourselves into the role. Because what this is us, what our question is really asking is really to touch in some amount of detail on every aspect. Because in order for this MNC, to decide to go into Malaysia, it has to know not only culture, but it, it, it needs to know every aspect of it. Yes. You understand? Right. And as such, if you are if you are giving a report in that respect, it must have greater detail, much, much greater detail. Yes. Detail on everything, but um, put in a way that th that the NMT can understand it without you writing a thousand and, and more extra words, as they say, because it's it, it's limited in its in its in the entire report. So really and truly, um, whilst we have to do some explanation, um, we have to also be very careful because in in taking the theory taking the aspects and so mm -hmm. it will be very easy to, to go over the word count if you're not careful. Yes, yes. It will be very easy to go over the word count if you're not careful. And this is where very succinct writing is required, where every word and every sentence must be well placed. Yes. 
Um, two important points you raised there. First point is that you must assume your role, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yes? Mm -hmm. So it must be a, a very, it, you must assume your role. That's the first point, right? You are the board consultant. And then secondly, you must link the factor to the IHRM functions that are likely to be used right, in the local subsidiary. And IHRM functions, right, is not only the style of recruitment, polycentric or ethnocentric or geocentric, right? What about the type of performance appraisers that will be used, right? What about the type of performance appraisers that will be used? Yeah, the type of performance appraisers that will be used, right? The type of compensation systems which will be used, right? Obviously, your 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 managers, your low level staff, you might be paying them according to local rates. That is polycentric compensation, right? If you have expatriates in senior positions in the new subsidiary in Malaysia, you might be using the balance sheet approach. So mm. you have to be able. You must know the material for you to feel these arguments, right? Showing the examiner that the examiner must clearly capture that you have discussed about three to four IHRM functions and let me factor it. Compensation, recruitment, promotion, training, right? Perhaps. Just to itemize a few, right? Just to itemize a few. Yeah? So excellent, yeah. Yeah? So let's now review a journal article, uh, which is one of the best ones, which, which clearly demonstrates what the whole assignment is all about. It's a bit old, 20 years, 25 years old, but it best explains right, the, all the factors and what you need to consider. A very, very popular, right? And know the style of writing. Mm -hmm. It's a new share. Mm -hmm. Right? Again. Influences on human resource management practices in multinational corporations. Philip M. Rosemary and Nitenoria, I believe from the Harvard Business School, yes. Right? A study of human resource management practices in 249 US affiliates, affiliates and subsidiaries of foreign-based multinational corporations shows that in general affiliate HRM practices closely follow local practices with differences among specific practices. Degree of similarity to local practices, the degree of similarity to local practices is significant, significantly influenced by the method of founding. This is a new founded subsidiary wholly owned by the British MNC. Right, so it's, there's high dependency, right, on the parent company. The subsidy will be highly dependent on the parent company for resources and manpower expertise, etc. In addition, sharp differences are revealed among the affiliates of Canadian, Japanese, and European MNCs, suggesting strong country effects. Together, these findings support the view of MNCs as composed of differentiated practices which in turn are shared by forces for local isomorphism, uh, isomorphic theory, and for internal consistency, localization. One of the central questions in the literature on MNCs is the extent to which their various foreign affiliates or subsidiaries act and behave as local firms versus the extent to which their practices resemble those of the parent corporation or some other global standard. Ah, in the seminal paper on this topic, you see how they quoted Paul Mata very early on. And you need to do this as well and reinforce it with a more up-to-date reference. Three types of MNCs, ethnocentric, polycentric, and global. According to this topology, the management practices and foreign affiliates of MNCs could resemble those of the MNC's home country, ethnocentric, and they bracket it off, 
conform to the local practices of the affiliate host country, in this case, Malaysia, polycentric, or could adhere to, or could adhere to a global standard, a worldwide standard, global, which is geocentric. <laughs> and these are the three types. And these are the three types of multinational orientations. These are the three types of multinational orientations. Right. Again, as you move on, scroll down. I will email you all this. It gives you a background to the whole topic standardization and localization, and what factors influences the transfer of HRM practices. More recently, scholars have argued that view multinationals in terms of an overall orientation obscures the internal differentiation of management practices, right? Management practices within an MNC. Instead, they argue, instead they argue an MNC is properly viewed as a nexus of differentiated practices. According to this view, MNC affiliates are composed of many separate practices, ranging from manufacturing to finance to human resources, each of which faces distinct pressures for global efficiency and for local responsiveness. In addition, theoretical terms, the profile of management practices in an MNC is shaped by the interplay of opposing pressures for internal consistency and for isomorphism with the local institutional environment. So if you are speaking about host country factors, you must mention institutional theory, institutional factors, and isomorphic theory. And let me repeat that. When speaking about host country related factors, you must mention institutional theory, right? Right? Institutional theory, right? And the isomorphic debate, right? As a consequence, Pullmutter's three part topology may not be sufficient to describe the complexity within MNC affiliates. Right? Right? As Sonen and Van den Bock found in a study of Belgian firms, some affiliate practices may tend more closely to resemble the MNC's home country practices, while others may more closely resemble host country practices. And you see how nicely they put that? Some HRM functions resemble host country practices and some may resemble home country. The home country is obviously Great Britain, the home of the parent MNC. In this study, we examine the forces that shape HRM practices and MNC. HRM practices, no less than others, as Evans and Lorange have noted, are subject to the dual pressures for local adaptation and internal consistency. Accordingly, we start by examining the resemblance of a number of affiliate HRM practices to local practices and to parent practices. From that baseline, we consider a set of related hypotheses, testing whether factors such as the extent to which the affiliate is embodied in the local environment, the extent of flows between the parent and the affiliate, the characteristics of the parent and the nature of the industry, right? Finally, we examine differences among affiliates according to their parent nationality, right? Right? So of the two logics that shape HRM practices in MNCs, which is stronger? The pressure for internal consistency, right? Right, internal consistency is standardization of HRM practices, right, between subsidiaries and the home country, or the pressure for local isomorphism. Again, our view suggests that the pressure for internal consistency is stronger, right, because employees may move around subunits, MNC City with a consistent approach to compensation and benefits, and to maintain consistent policies and procedures. Right, let's drill down Look at the factors. Mm -hmm. Let's go into the factors now.
Yeah. From these six HRM practices, we offer a hypothesis followed by, uh, look at the IHRM function that they're discussing. Right, time off, all right. Benefits, gender composition, training, executive bonus, and participation, right? Participation. You don't have to go to so much detail, but I've just discussed three or four IHRM functions. Recruitment, training, performance appraisals, and possible, yes, and pay and compensation, bonus, All right? Well, factors related to local embeddedness. Method of founding. Affiliates are founded as greenfield investments or through acquisition. Affiliates founded as greenfield investments are typically formed by MNC's employees who seek to replicate key features of the parent company. On the other hand, affiliates are founded as independent firms and only later acquired by the MNC may remain relatively similar to local firms, right? Good. Ah, look at the situational factors which affect affiliate HRM practices. And the, the group here very nicely for you. There are certain parent company, parent characteristics like British, Great British, Great Britain uh, uh, characteristics which, is take, which dictate the standardization such as the parent country culture, international experience, how internationally experienced the British MNC, and the control orientation. These are three factors you can, three dimensions or three factors you can discuss under parent country related factors, right? Or country of origin factors and related to the four influences frame, framework. The, right, look at the left hand side. The embeddedness of the local affiliate. Look what dimensions we discuss here. The method of founding, age, size, dependence on local inputs, unionization, local regulations. So all these are institutional variables in the host country of Malaysia, which will almost dictate, right, the localization of HRM practices in Malaysia, such as use the utilization of local recruitment practices, using local compensation practices, right? Again, using what local uh, uh, trade union negotiation practices, perhaps. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it's right here. This is a very useful graphic. Right, that shows right the opposing ends of standardization, localization, and how this will influence the flow of people, capital, and information. Right, so these are the small little diagrams you can include in your appendices, appendix section, and refer to it in your report write up. Again, the examiner will be able to distinguish that you did your further reading, right? That you did the further reading for the assignment. Right. So you will see as we move down the affiliate age, the affiliate size, good, 
resemblance to local HRM practices for which is as of the affiliate local resource dependency. Affiliates receive inputs for affiliates again subsidiaries such as raw materials and intermediate parts from other units of the MNC as well as from the local environment. If the affiliate is heavily dependent upon the local environment, oh, that's an interesting point. If the new subsidiary in Malaysia is dependent upon the Malaysian economy for resources like finance and skills and know-how and manpower, then you will find that the new subsidiary will use local HRM functions because it is dependent on the local economy for resources, right? By the same token, if the new subsidiary is dependent right on if it's dependent on the parent company you will find that 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 this will result in the use of standardization of hrm functions standardization of hrm functions right factors related to parent affiliate flows right the presence of expatriates obviously will influence the a ethnocentric sort of orientation will obviously influence a sort of ethnocentric orientation, ethnocentric orientation, ethnocentric orientation, right? Ethnocentric orientation, mm -hmm. right? Communication with the parent. The executives of some affiliates may be frequently may be frequently in communication with members of the parent organization. So where there is frequent flow of communication between Malaysia and British, this will influence, right, a sort of ethnocentric orientation. How can you incorporate the large present, the, large, uh, the high presence of British multinationals in Malaysia? And we already established that which you should clearly identify in your personal analysis, that there's a high presence of British multinationals in Malaysia. I would like to believe Malaysia is in the common, British Commonwealth, which is why there's a specific British Chamber of Commerce for British companies operating in Malaysia, for British companies operating in Malaysia. Yep. Again, you have factors related to parent characteristics, parent country culture. Ah, a substantial body of research has shown that management practices are influenced by national culture. Simple, simply put, Hofstede. Why right, with the immediately. Similarly, culture of an MNC parent may affect the management of a foreign subsidiaries. Right, as has been shown in the case of Japanese MNCs. Just as national culture has been shown to have a significant effect on entry strategy, we might expect a similar effect on affiliate management practices subsequent to entry. Subsequent to entry. All right? Hypothesis 12. Resemblance to local HRM practices is negatively related to the culture distance between the parent country and the host country. Between the parent country and the host country. The international experience of the parent. Again, as Franco and Bartlett and Goshal have noted, an MNC that establishes an affiliate abroad, right, may at first, right, may at first, Right. May develop a right and establishes an affair may at first seek simply to replicate its home country practices. So the inter how experience is the British MNC and in international operations. So that might present a case for an ethnocentric orientation, British dominance in terms of recruitment, training and development, compensation performance management and performance appraisals. The control orientation of the parent. Ah, how dominating, right, is the British MNC? 
we call that the control orientation, or are they willing to empower their sub new subsidiaries to do what? To decide upon their own HRM functions. Factors related to the nature of the business. Global or multi-domestic industry scope. In global industries where demand is common across countries, where there are strong forces for worldwide integration and where competition is among global players, we would expect the affiliate to be less concerned with global with the local custom because here the company, will, the, the, the British MNC might want to use practices which are globally accepted, striving for global, global consistency. Global consistency. Conversely, in multi-domestic industries where you tailor your product or service offering to the particular in, uh, economy in which you operate, national responsiveness is key and where one must confront strong local competitors. Right? Strong local competitors. So that's the research design, right? And all the figures and data. Let's look at the conclusion. Let's see what this study, right, concluded. After testing all these hypotheses using data from the 249 companies, right? Conclusions. We began the study with an interest in understanding the forces that shape specific management practices in the affiliates of MNCs. Focusing on HRM practices in US affiliates, we determined as a first conclusion that they tend primarily to resemble local practices. More importantly, we demonstrated that human resource management is not a monolithic function, but consists of practices which differ in their relative resemblance to local practices and to parent practices. These findings often offer support for the view of MNCs as a nexus of differentiated practice, with specific practices shaped to varying extents by different forces. In addition, we demonstrated that specific independent variables, right, have significant effects on HRM practices overall, with the most important being founding, dependence upon the local environment for inputs, presence of expatriates and frequency of communication. Finally, we have, sh right, we have shown specific tendencies according to the parent nationality. To what extent can these findings be generalized? All too often, empirical findings are treating as implicitly universal without appropriate circumspection, right? Because this study has examined our cell, right? Examined HRM practice of MNC affiliates in the United States, we should ask ourselves two questions. Well, we can leave out that. Regarding functions other than human resource management, one of the authors has elsewhere presented findings about MNC's affiliate practices in four functions human resource management, marketing, financial control, and manufacturing. All right? So we spoke about other functions. Spoke a little about limitations, right? Limitations, good. Concerns about conforming to foreign work rules and HRM practices appear to be exaggerated for the several human resource practices, including the study, at least adherence to local practices is the dominant influence. Adherence to local practices is the dominant influence. Excellent. So guys, tell me what you think. Yeah? Tell me what you think about the article. I will email this article to the team as well as a couple others. Yeah? What do you think about the article thus far? All participants are unmuted.
right? What do you think about the article? This journal article. So how many references are we using, are, are we expecting for assignments such as this? At least 40 to 50. At least 40 to 50. Because there's a wealth of material on this topic. This is a, a crucial element. This topic, standardization versus localization, is a, a, a key team for international human resource management. So at least 40 to 50 references, three to four pages of references, right, should be cited. Please remember to use different diversity of references from textbooks, journal articles, from the, the textbooks that the examiner pointed to in your assignment requirements. You have sent the assignment requirement documents and by university, right? Please remember to reference from those texts because those are the core texts for the course, right? Those are the core texts for the course. So we want different diversity of references, not only from journal articles, but from online sources, from textbooks, even from documentaries, right? All tailored to the Malaysian context and the topic, of course. Questions? Floor is open. Nigel, want... one question. How soon could we get these um these um documents? You can get it. I will email it to you tonight and you guys will get it by tomorrow. Appreciate right? It. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys will get it. Definitely. Right? I will email it to you and whatever I come across, I'm gonna email it to you all. Right? Thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Any questions again? Ramona? Uh -uh. Not at this time. Okay, great, great. Bridget, Kemba, Marielle. No, Nigel. Um, but is this our last class today? Yep, yep. Today's our last class. Okay. Right. Um, you all uh, today was your last class for the other subjects. Yes. So we not wrap up an hour, right? Correct. Okay, great. This is our last class. I think we are going good standing for the assignment. Our last class. Uh, you all try to submit to me by the twentieth. Right for a review for an individual assignment review, right? And no questions. Well, at this point in time, while we request persons, no questions. If you have questions, do not WhatsApp me, email me, right? Okay, do not WhatsApp, email me. Try to refrain for those who have my number, don't use it. Get okay? send me an email, work on to work towards the April 20th submission deadline. Right, I think we had some good coverage of the course. I wish you all the best in this course. You all make sure, put your best foot forward, do the research, obey the assignment requirements, and submit to me by April the 20th, right? So we press pause, right? Mm -hmm. Press pause. I will see the entire team, well, hopefully, in the college later on, okay? Right? Right? Of course, you're very welcome. Well, very welcome. You all keep safe, adhere to the rules, regulations of COVID-19, right? Happy Easter, right, to the entire team. I know it's trying time. You all make sure you stock up on food supplies and so on. Not too sure what, what's gonna happen in the coming days or coming weeks, you will be work on your assignments, capitalize on your time, get some rest as well, right? You all keep good, keep good, right? And God bless.